Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds, sometimes thousands, of poker vlogger hands and bring you 10 of the best. Something a little special in this episode. We are rounding up 10 of the best for February 2022. We've looked back over the last four weeks, scoured our previous videos and unwatched footage, and found you the 10 very best hands that we could find for the whole month of February. And we've got it all in this episode. We've got World Series of Poker circuit rings. We've got lessons on bluffing and trusting your gut. And we've got the longest tank in poker history. So without further ado, let's make a start. At number 10, and kicking things off for this monthly special, is Frankie, one of the next-gen poker boys. He's playing in a 1-3 game at the Texas Card House in Dallas, Texas. And it just doesn't get better than this, does it, Frankie? Welcome to the big part of the night. We are under the gun with Pocket Kings, the Cowboys. Just gonna limp this one. I think Riddick to my left is going to be raising a lot. I'm gonna put in that beautiful limp squeeze. Let's see it. Riddick plus one. Yes, he's got a raising hand. E3 suited. He bumps up to 20. Toothless calls with the offsuit variation. Bill's coming along with a pretty suited connector. Things get interesting as Trev in the big blind has pocket jellos. He puts in a three bet himself to $125. Well, 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 what to do? If I four bet, I think Trev is gonna fold anything under queens here. So I don't wanna four bet and scare everyone out. Although I think a four bet here just to take down all the dead money is a great move as well. I want to get Nicholas involved. Rinnick, I wanna get him involved. I just put in a flat call here. Very, very tricky. We're hoping Rinnick shoves all in behind us, but he just puts in the call. Toothless folds. And Bill says that he cannot fold for these pot odds. He puts in the call. Now here we go. Four ways in a three bet pot. Comes nine high. Oh my Ooh, God. Uh, this is dangerous for Trevor here. Absolutely. Also dangerous for Bill has top pair. All right, guys, we got the perfect flop for our hand. We have the most equity. It checks to me. And I put in a value bet of $175. This pot is huge. And it gets on over to Bill after we see a fold from Nick. He's going all in. And then let's go to the Jello camera to see what Trev's up to. He's got a little smile. It does not look like he's folding. He's going all in too. The cameras are on me. This is the spot we were hoping for. All I gotta do is put the chips in the middle, which I do. I know Frankie has been waiting for the spot all night. He hasn't really gotten anything going. This would be a big win for him if he could help. If he could hold here. 72% currently to hold. Oh my gosh. Finds and two pair on the, on the turn. turn. And no oh board pairing on the river means gosh. that Bill's got it. Wow. Nine, eight takes it down versus two over pairs for the whole thing. Oh man. Oh my gosh. What a hand. Almost 2K pot at a 1 3 game. At number nine, and we have your boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, playing in a $300 tournament at the Hilton in Aruba. And the big question is, will these offsuit connectors give Rampage the title? This next hand starts out with 8-7 offsuit on the button. I'm in position with two cards next to each other, so I decide to limp here and make the call for 20000 And this big limp player checks his option, so we're off to see a free flop of Jack-8-5 to hearts. With middle pair, he checks it over to me, and I can go either way with a check or bet. I decided to check this one back. The turn is a seven. What a bank. Another two pair holding. He checks for a second time and let's go for some value. Hopefully, I bet out 45,000. And upon this 45,000 bet, this player has about 200 ish thousand in front and in his stack. He goes all in. I snap call, announce my two pair. Come on, let's hold to win this tournament. When I announce my hand, he says that he's drawing dead with 3-5 off suit. I just need to fade one of two fives remaining in the deck, and the ring is ours. The river comes a jack. Let's go. Nice playing with you, Adam. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking to you throughout this entire tournament who watches the channel. Really good run to Adam and big credit to him for surviving with a short stack and placing second here. But I'm happy to win. 
There are sparkles flying in the air for celebration. And I take down my third ever significant tournament of my life, winning some more hardware. And I can claim that the WSOP circuit ring is mine. And number eight, we're with Branson. He's playing in the Gardens Casino, Hawaiian Gardens, California, in a 5-5 cash game. And Branson, there really is no need to feel embarrassed. We have all been in spots just like this. Okay, so here is the hand that I am super embarrassed about. So (laughs) hang with me here. I have pocket aces again in the button. There's a straddle, the low jack limps, and I make it $40 and both the straddle and low jack call. The flop comes out deuce, five, six, rainbow, and it checks to me. And here, my first instinct is to bet, but I've been talking to some better friends of mine and they say with aces and kings on these low boards to mix in some checks. uh, That way I can have strong checks in my range. And also I am never gonna have the nuts here. I'm never gonna have three, four, and I'm hardly gonna have a set here while my opponents are more likely to have a set or even flopping the straight. So I check, the turn comes, the four of clubs bringing two clubs, and the straddle leads out for $60. The low jack folds, and it's on me. I underrepped my hand, and now there's a one-liner to the straight. I'm thinking, does he have a three? I bet $40 pre-flop. He is in the straddle, but how many threes does he really have here? I... I'm thinking maybe he has a club draw. So I call and I think that's fine. And the river comes an eight. Now the straddle bets 170. So as you guys probably see, there's a second one liner and this should be an easy fold, but I just, I don't don't know. I I don't see it. I, (laughs) for some reason, All I'm thinking about in my head is, does this guy have a three or not? This guy either has a three or he's bluffing. And I I don't know. I just didn't see the second one-liner and I felt so, so stupid. I debated for a long time. I was like, closing my eyes. Don't close your eyes, guys. Just look at the board, read the board properly. And in my head, I thought, well, I don't know how many times he has a three that he calls $40 preflop. So I was like, I hope he has a flush draw that missed. And I decide to call and he shows 7-10 offsuit. So he turned the open ender and then rivered the straight. But I was super embarrassed. And I don't know, I've never done that where I just didn't see something so obvious. It was, it was right in front of my face. And after that, I was just so tilted. Number seven in our top 10 for February. And Rob Rickerman is playing in a 5-10 game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And don't forget, folks, just like every other hand that we feature here at Suited Aces Poker, a link to the original video content is in the description box below. Exactly one orbit later, I'm back under the gun with pocket sevens. I open for $30. The hijack calls and it's back to the same player I just got with the quads in the cutoff. He sticks in the three bet to 120, folds to me. Right as I put in the call, he says, I'm thinking to myself, well, I hope so. So I make the call. The hijack calls as well. Three ways to a flop of 10, 7, 5, rainbow. Are you kidding me? This time I check because they saw how I played the quads leading right out with a bet. So I check here, next player checks, it's to the original Razor, he fires out a bet of $220. Middle set here, rainbow board, there are some straight draws out there but no flush draws to worry about so I decide to flat here hoping to bring in the other opponent. He does make the lay down though however and we go heads up to an 8 of spades on the turn. A few gut shots get there and I'm losing to two bigger sets but uh, pretty sure we're still good here. I check and he goes into the tank for a bit. Looks like he's thinking about jamming here, but uh, ends up slowing down, checks back, off to the river card, looking for a blank here, and holy shit, it's another seven. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? I think for a little bit, about an amount he might be able to call this time, um, instead of trying to go for max value here, so I decide on a bet of 330, he snap calls, and... (laughs) 
He called it, right? He even told it. Seat one, teach me, teach me. Can't really teach this, just straight dumb luck. I think showing that last hand though might have got me some action here as it's pretty unbelievable I, I have it again. At number six, and Brad Owen is playing in a 5-10 game at the Aria in Vegas. And this is a really good lesson on just how to bluff. We've got 8-6 suited in the big blind. The hijack min raises to 40. This is an odd amount. The small blind who's been free betting a lot makes it 120. This is another really small sizing. My sense is that neither player is all that strong. I could easily wait for a better hand to get involved, but on a scale of 1 to 10, that wouldn't be very fun. My image is good since I've only 4-bet with hands at the top of my range so far, and I haven't even 3-bet in some situations that I could have. I take advantage by putting in a cold 4-bet to 400. Usually, we'd want to do this with an ace in our hand. Today, we're living on the edge. This move will look a lot like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and then some ace, queen, or ace, five through ace, do suited occasionally as bluffs. I expect it to get through for me pretty often. It doesn't this time. The hijack calls for 360 more, then the small blind calls for 280 more. This is a rare four bet multi-way pot. My perception of the hijack's min raise must have been way off. It might even be trapping with aces. If not, you could have another strong pocket pair like kings, queens, or jacks. Small blind on the other hand will probably never have aces. You could have other strong pocket pairs though. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes ace five three with two hearts. It's pretty terrible for our actual hand, but it smashes our range, including the hands that we should have been four bet bluffing with. What doesn't do well on this flop is the hand that I actually chose to four bet bluff with. We've got nothing except a backdoor straight draw. At least any deuce, four, seven, or nine will help us improve. Small blind checks. I take a stab at it for 500 like I would if I had aces, ace five, ace king, and ace queen. You saw me also bet this amount in a four bet pot with queens on a king high board previously. My bet doesn't necessarily mean much by itself, but I'm hopeful that this could get most pocket pairs that miss sets to fold. The hijack is thinking for a very long time about what to do. It doesn't seem like he's contemplating a raise. It feels more like he doesn't want to fold a mediocre hand for only 500, but I'm not the only person that he has to be concerned about beating right now. He still has another opponent in the small blind that he has to consider. After a minute of tanking, the hijack calls. There's no reason for him to tank that long with aces if he was trapping preflop. You'd think that his decision would be easy, and he calls somewhat quickly to continue setting the trap. Instead, the hijack at least appeared to be genuinely on the fence about whether to call or fold. I don't think that he's that good of an actor. If he is, he deserves an Oscar for nailing the subtle things that players do when they're making difficult decisions. The hijack might have something like kings or queens, and it's just calling one time for a relatively small amount to see how the rest of this hand plays. Small blind folds immediately. It's down to heads up in a pot that's already large. The turn is the queen of spades, making things very interesting. Again, I can have a ton of strong hands, including aces, queens, ace, queen, ace, five, and ace, three. After seeing my opponent tank when facing a flop bet, coupled with the fact that he didn't five bet preflop, I've ruled out him having aces and significantly discounted him having ace, king because those are pretty straightforward calls to make on the flop. He probably has ace queen suited, kings or queens. There are two combos of ace queen suited, and there are three combos of queens that the player could have for a total of five combinations that'll never fold if I take one more shot as a bluff. Meanwhile, there are six combinations of pocket kings that my opponent will have to auto muck if I bet again. Even if my read on the flop was wrong and the opponent has ace king, he's not going to like seeing me put more money in the pot because he'd be calling to basically chop at best. There's also some tiny chance that the hijack has a hand like jacks. With 11 total combinations that are the most likely ones that my opponent will have, and me surmising that he'll fold 6 of them, I put in another borderline suicidal bluff attempt, announcing a bet of... 1400? Yep. Take the house. What's that? 1400. It doesn't get much more interesting than this. I'm putting almost everything on the line. If we can win the pot half the time or more, it's a great play because we're risking 1400 to win 2200. I can talk about my reads on situations all day, but in reality, I'd never suggest that anyone put themselves in this position. I've invested 2300 in a hand that I had no real business being in in the first place. If I get called here, I'll have 1700 in my stack and I'll have to shut down on the river. That means I'll be stuck 3300 on the session. I don't have too much time to consider how bad I'll feel if I lose because the opponent snap folds, we get the Hail Mary bluff through in the clutch, our line looks like we have the nuts or something close to it, when really, we get lucky to take down a large pot with only 8 high. It's difficult to put into words how relieved I am to immediately get the fold, but you can see my hand shaking as all the adrenaline is coursing through my body. This one gets us above the even mark, and that's where we're going to stay. And here are our top 5 hands for February. At number 5, 
Close to Broke is playing at the Seminole Hard Rock down in Hollywood, Florida. He's in a big 10-25 cash game, and I can't. But can any one of you beat a seven-minute tank? Let us know in the comments. Anyways, we look down at Ace-5 suited here from under the straddle. We make it $150. It folds all the way to that straddle player who I was joking along with, and he decides to make the call. And let's tune in and see if you can hear me talking to him. I remember value. I know value. I know. I swear to God. I know. I swear to God. Do you know it's a good poker game when they say, I swear to God. <laughs> After a little bit of friendly banter, we go off to a flop that comes as great and as picture perfect as possible. The flop comes 985 with two hearts and a diamond out there. We flop the nut flush draw as well as a pair. We decide to see bet for $200 and my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call. The turn comes an unbelievable king of hearts. We now have turned the nut somehow. When he checks it over to me, it's time that we get as much money as we can into the middle. And I bet $600, which is a pretty massive sizing. And again, he thinks that we're supposed to be going for value. Or maybe is that a leveling war that we have now set? My opponent goes deep, deep into the tank before deciding on just a call. We have ended up on this river, hoping for a brick. No pairing the board. No straight flush cards out there. And we got exactly what the doctor ordered it's a jack of spades and i almost instantly jam all I know you're going to call in. for fifty four hundred dollars fifty four hundred dollars the bet on the turn was six hundred dollars we have gone nearly three x the size of the pot with this river jam i'm targeting a very specific range I believe that my opponent has a flush. I'm almost certainly positive that he has a flush. And if he doesn't, there is no way in hell that with this board run out, he'd be calling with anything weaker than a set or maybe specifically a hand like King Jack suited or something like that. So when we get to this river, I just think he has to have a flush or a really strong set. He goes deep into the tank. And I am not exaggerating. I'm going to play it in fast forward. He goes into the tank for over seven minutes. And we're not really at the stake level where calling the clock is a frequent thing or something that's ever comes up. There's very little talk going on. He is talking to himself. But in these stakes, my goal is to never say anything in a spot this big. This is a massive spot for me. And if he calls, this will be the largest pot I've ever played in my entire life. And will take me out of the hole pretty significantly and book a pretty profitable win if he makes the call. After an unbelievable tanking session, my opponent ultimately decides... On the call, we flip over ace five of hearts and he shows me queen deuce of hearts. He had the second nuts and tanked for over seven minutes. Oh my goodness. The table is going crazy. And as you can see from this film here, Rampage was able to get all of the footage from his angle. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Number four and Huggy is playing in a one two game at the lodge in Austin. And this is a great reminder to always trust your gut. In the fifth hand of our session, we've got 10 eight suited in clubs in the plus one position. The player in our right limps and I bump it up to $12. One other player calls along with the limper, the limper checks in the dark and the three of us head to the flop, which comes nine, four, six rainbow. So we've got a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. I leave for $20 and just the limper makes the call. So we're heads up now. The turn brings the six of clubs. So we pick up a straight flush draw now. Our opponent checks again, and I decide to make another bet to see if I can get any draws out, making it $40 this time. He makes a pretty quick call again, and we're heading to the river where we see the King of Diamonds. He now leads into us for $112. This bet doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I suppose he could have a 6, but I feel like he would have bet or raised on the turn to protect against draws. Before reaching the river, I honestly was thinking he might have a hand like 7-5 for a straight draw. There weren't any flush draws in the flop, so a missed straight draw is really the only thing that makes sense to me. On top of that, this is clearly his last hand before the big blind reaches him as he's got all his chips in his rack and it feels like he's trying to back himself out of a hole and protect his winnings at this point. In my head I'm thinking, if I wasn't recording for the vlog, I'd make a hero call with 10 high against what feels like 7 high. 
But mainly because of recording, I feel like I'm just gonna look like an idiot in the vlog when I call and get shown the nuts or something and have to put that in the vlog. So I end up going against my instincts and laying it down. I feel like you might be bluffing. You got 5'7". 7'8". 7'8". Seven, I almost called, I almost called. Ah, my instincts were right. I really wish I had made that call. Top three for February and at number three, Rampage Poker is playing in a $1,700 buy-in tournament at the Hilton in Aruba. And this hand goes from hero to zero in about three seconds flat. I have five deuce of diamonds in the big blind. The low jack opens to 3,200. Small blind makes the call and these two cards are suited. For one more big blind to call, I'm in here. Let's see a flop three ways. The flop comes king, seven, five, two hearts. Got bottom pair but not a whole lot going on for us. Action goes check, check, check. Get to see a free turn, which comes the magical five of hearts. So sick here. Unfortunate that the heart draw does get there, but I shouldn't be too concerned given the passive action on the flop. The small blind decides to lead out for 5,000. And with trips here, my hand is as good as it can get. Time to raise it up and get stacks in. I put in a raise to 14,000. The low jack player gets out of the way and folds. And onto the small blind player. Player to turn right who I just doubled up in the big hand with pocket fives. He decides on a call. Let's see a big one. Hoping to see a brick. The river is a brick deuce. Improves us to a full house. And out of nowhere, this hand is a huge bink. If somehow we were beat against a flush on the turn, then, well, certainly I'm happy to get it all in and double up through this opponent. He checks again, and with about 30,000 in stack, I decide to go for it and jam all in. He snap calls, and I don't know what that means, but I've got a full house. This player shows us 5-7 for a larger full house. Ah, oh, shit. That sucks. GG's to the first bullet of this main event. What an absolute roller coaster ride and just dumped off all of my chips to the player to my right. Good luck to you. Number two, and Kyle Fischel is playing at the Orange City Racing and Car Club down in Orange City, Florida. He's in a 2 5 cash game. And this has to be the scariest flop for quads. I look down at pocket jacks. An early position player raises to $25. There's one caller. I'm in the hijack. I'm not going to just call with jacks. Definitely going to put in the larger size three bet, especially when the other two opponents have very short stacks. I'd like to just get all the money in right now. I raise to $110. Well, the button calls. The preflop aggressor decides to call and the middle position limper decides to fold. So we're actually three ways to a flop, where deja vu, we flop quads. Even better, the pre-flop aggressor jams for $125. Now in this spot, I have to tank for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to hopefully get the third player in or maybe even back raise, because I definitely don't want to seem too eager and push him out of the pot when hopefully he could have some Broadway cards or some flush cards and be willing to put in a call and maybe build a dry side pot. Luckily, when I call, the button decides to call as well. So we're three ways to a turn card, one all in. Which is the nine of clubs. Actually a, a nightmare turn card for me because I previously had quad jacks cracked by a king high straight flush in my life and thoughts of that are somehow creeping in. But either way, if you have a straight flush, I guess you get all my money. So to start the build in the side pot, I bet $200. Hopefully a regular flush will be able to pay it off. Maybe a king queen that's not of clubs, something like that. But the button decides to fold. So against the all-in player, quads is definitely good. And this time it actually held up and we got the $500 high hand bonus. So that's nice. I had 16, quad jacks for the king. And at number one, number one for February, congratulations go to Harry B, who in this hand is playing in a 5-10 game at the Seminole Casino in Coconut Creek, Florida. And if you're going to back into a hand, Harry B, this has to be the hand to do it with. This is literally probably the coolest hand that I've put on the channel so far. It bolts to me and I'm on the button with 8-4 suited. 
And yes, 8-4 suited isn't open on the button. The only customer I have is the big blind, so we're going heads up to a flop. The flop provides us absolutely no help. The flop is queen 10-5 with one spade. So all we really have is some backdoor flush draws and some straight draws. When she checks it over to me, I'm sure eight high is not good here. So I decided to throw out $25, planning on barreling on any flush card or any straight card. And she does decide to make the call. We're off to see a turn, which is a very good turn. We turn a straight flush draw with the seven of spades, literally one of the best possible cards we could have asked for. So when she checks over to me, this is a card that I 100% am not going to be shutting down on. We have so much equity and right now all we have is eight high. So definitely want to be putting in a bet here. As for bet sizing, I think this is a spot that an over bet makes a lot of sense for one of two reasons. One is we can fold out some hands that are marginally beating us to just like a 10x or maybe even some queen x. I don't think any straight draws are going to continue on an over bet. And if we do get called and we do brick the river, it's pretty safe to assume that she does have a strong hand. So she'll be calling off on a lot of runouts. So with that being said, once again, I think an over bet is definitely the best play here. I decided to throw out $150. There is a lot of rivers that I'm going to be shutting down on, but let's hope that we do not get one of those. Praying that we can complete our straight or our flush, but why don't we just complete both of them? The river is a six of spades. Are you kidding me? We literally back ourselves into a straight flush. The most disguised straight flush imagine like it's literally crazy action does start off on the small blind player and what in the world if this hand couldn't get any better she decides to lead out for three hundred dollars what the heck is going on we're sitting here with the absolute nutter butters we're not losing what in the world is going on i look over at her chip stack and she definitely has some more chips to be played with with around $1,000 behind after the $300 bet, I think there's only one bet here that makes a lot of sense, and that is all in. Even though it is a pretty big over bet, the reason being is if she's leading on the river for this sizing, she only has one of two hands. She only has a really strong hand that's going to be calling off a large bet, or she has nothing. So if she has nothing, she's not calling a raise regardless, and if she has a super strong hand, why not just go for the max? So I decide to go all in. Before I could even finish my sentence, she pretty quickly announces call. And obviously, we're going to be winning this one. She quickly tables queen 10. So she had us absolutely smoked on the flop. But luckily for us, we hit the most nutty, disgusting runout I could have ever imagined. And luckily at Seminole Casino Coconut Creek, we also hit a high hand. So that is going to be a few extra hundred in our pocket. But this is by far one of the most nutty hands I have ever played. And we get the absolute maximum. Yep. If you back it into a hand, it may as well be a straight flush. Nice work there from Harry B. And congratulations, Harry, on making it to the number one spot for February 2022. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We really appreciate the support. We've been getting some lovely feedback, both in the comments and from friends in the poker world. We're grateful for it. We're glad that you're enjoying it just as much as we are putting it all together. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again on the next episode of Suited Aces Poker for 10 of the best. Until then, good luck at the felt.